With the release of version 14 of PLS Pole and Tower, the drafting and annotation functions have been improved as well as augmented to include a Sheets view, similar to the Sheets view for the plan and profile in PLS CAD. To create a Sheets view in PLS Pole or Tower, you can simply open the existing model and then go to the window Sheets view, which will create a default Sheets view that consists of three sheets. The first is a title page that includes the project name and an isometric view of the structure. The second is a drawing page that has a separate structure inset view for the plan, longitudinal, and transverse views of the structure. It also includes an inset report view of the angle groups table for tower models or material report for PLS pole models. Inset report views are the subject of another video you can check out on our website. The third sheet is a loading tree that gives an isometric view of the structure as well as a report view of the load cases included in the LCA file associated with the structure. Going back to the initial sheets view, some of the settings in the drafting menu are the same as your PLS CAD model. The first is the drafting page size which allows you to define the height and width of the pages in the sheets view. The next is a drafting number of sheet pages, which allows you to define the start page number for the sheets view, the number of title pages, the number of notes pages, drawing pages, and appendix pages. These are different areas in the sheets view to give you independent control over such things as attachments and placement of the reports and inset views. Another item that you can use to attach raster images and vector drawings to a sheets view is the Drafting Attachment Manager. For this example, let's attach a common DXF border to our sheets view. You can do this by going to the Attachment Manager and hitting the Attach button and then selecting the file you wish to attach and when you hit Open, it will bring up an Options menu that will allow you to pick which view to attach the item to and whether you want it attached to all sheets, a single sheet, or one of the other sections of the sheets view. For this we will attach to all sheets and select OK. Now the border drawing is attached to all the sheets. You can see as you look around the sheets view the border has areas to make revisions and other notes that you may need to do on your different sheets views. Next, let's look at placing a dimension line using the new Snap Dimension command. We'll zoom in on the transverse view and put a total height dimension from the top to the bottom of the structure. First, pick the Dimension button from the toolbar and select the point at the top of the structure and then at the bottom of the structure. After selecting the second point, the dimension will show along the diagonal and you can move your mouse to the right to get a horizontal dimension or to the left to get the vertical dimension. After clicking the left side for the vertical dimension, you will be able to move the dimension line orthogonally until you get the placement you want, and then left click again to finalize its position, and leader lines will appear showing where the dimension was measured. Next, let's place a cross section view of the bottom of the arm and the blank area of the sheet. First, let's detail where this cross section will occur by going to the longitudinal view and adding a section bubble to detail where this cross section occurs. You can go to the new Annotation Add Section Bubble command and then select which view you want this annotation to appear. You can choose a single sheet or one of the sheet sections, but in working in an inset view, you would want to select Inset View. Start on the right side and click where you want the bottom of the select section arrow, and then you can hold down the control key to get a vertical line then click just above the bottom of the arm and then create the horizontal line by still holding the control key and the finish with the section bubble. Once finished just middle click to end the line and the section bubble label will appear and you can enter text for the upper and lower portion of the bubble. For this let's call it section A1. Now let's add the inset structure view for this cross section. You would do this most easily by going to the model view of the structure and using the cut command to trim away the sections of the model you do not wish to see in a cross section view. 
The cut command is the little pair of scissors in the toolbar. You may find it necessary to make multiple selections and zoom in on the model. In this instance, we're zooming in on that bottom arm. We're going to go in and select several times to get all the members cut away that we do not want to see, including the insulators. Once you get the view clipped to what you want to see, you can use the View from Top button to get the model in the correct orientation. And now you can go back to the Sheets view. Now that you're back in the Sheets view, you can go to Drafting, Inset View, Add, Inset Structure View, which will prompt you to select the area you want, where you want the inset view. You can make a rough selection where you want the view, and then the Add Structure View will appear, where you can pick one of the standard isometric, plan, longitudinal, or transverse views, or you can pick the current model view, which you just previously created. Once you hit continue, you will be brought to the sheet inset view table and you can see the information about all the structure inset views. We can change the name of the one we just created to section A1. The table contains a great deal of the options for the inset views, including which sheet is located on, position on sheet, scale, annotation, display order, style, color, and labels. You can also choose to display your inset view borders. You may find it easy to maneuver and edit the view placement by seeing these borders as you create your sheet, so I'm going to turn these on for all the inset structure views. Now you have a cross-section view of that arm, but the placement is a little off from the other models. You may want those arm tips to actually line up. This can be accomplished using some of the inset view commands you can access using the entity info commands. You can hit your S key to change your snap settings and when you do so one of the options is inset views. Now when I select the edge of the inset view I can choose several commands including one to resize the view. You can select the edge you would like to move which highlights red and you can move it graphically. You can snap to the edge of another inset view by holding down the control key while moving the edge. This can be done vertically and horizontally. Now that it's snapped, you can see how the arms line up. Now let's add another dimension line to show the length of the arm using the same dimension command we'll use for the height. First we'll select the dimension command, select one joint on the left side of the arm, the other on the right, and then move that dimension up to where you'd like to see it, and the lines will show where the joints were measured from. In looking at the views, you may find it useful to label the members. Since this is next to the group table, you could label all the members using their group labels, which is accomplished by selecting the Edit Inset View command, which will take you to the table, and then you can change the structure member labels to group for that view. Once you've changed this, you can hit Apply to see the view update from the table without leaving the table view. Then hit OK to exit the table view. In looking at this view, the labels seem very jumbled, so you may wish to move this inset view to another sheet to increase its scale. First you will want to create a new blank sheet. You could go to the Drafting, Number of Sheet Pages and add a blank sheet there, or you could use the Entity Info command to add a drawing page. This will add a blank sheet to the end of the Sheets view. I could use the Entity Info command to graphically move the view to another sheet, or I could also use the Edit Inset view to open the table view, 
and change the sheet page number to the new sheet. This table view is also very useful if you're wanting to make copies of the same view on different sheets by copy and pasting the rows and changing the sheet page number in the table. Now I can go to that view and use the resize command to get a larger inset view. However, the actual view is still based on the old inset view dimension. To scale the view, you can use the auto scale inset view to grow the view. Now when you see the view, you will see the text seems a bit small. You can go to the drafting, text size, line width, style, color, and layer table to change the size of the text in the inset view labels. The dimension annotation also looks a bit small for this view as well. You can use the annotation modify command to change the size of the dimension text as well. Once you get a view set up for a type of model, you may want to share this view with similar models. You can do this by importing the settings into another model. Here is our same tower model with different cross-section views, notes, pages, and reports. This particular model, as you zoom in, you'll see has the foundation reactions report over on the end. Importing the look of this model is easily accomplished using the drafting, import drafting settings command which will ask you to select a structure model whose settings you wish to import. This will bring up the Drafting Import Options dialog, where you can select what you want to bring in from the model, including the pages, attachments, annotations, structure views, and report views. At the bottom, you can choose whether you wish to merge these with your current settings or replace them with the model settings being imported. Now you will see all the notes and views from the previous model, as well as the reports. Keep in mind if you have any reports such as the foundation loads that are based on the analysis of the structure, you will need to rerun these reports to update their contents as described in the inset report views video. Here is an example PLS poll sheets view. The main difference between the default views for PLS poll and tower is that the material list report is included instead of the group table in the tower sheets view. With the new Sheets view and drafting improvements in PLS Pole and Tower, it is easier than ever to create erection, construction, or load tree drawings for your structure models. For more information on the software, please see our website at www.powline.com or contact us at info at powline.com. If you are interested in purchasing the software, please send your inquiry to sales at powline.com. Thank you.